Thank you so much for watching Tomoshita Music. Today, I'm gonna talk about GAS, gas, gear acquisition syndrome, <laughs> guitar collection. Um, maybe bad habit, you know, you decide. But before I'm getting into this topic, very difficult things to talk about. But today, January 6th, is our anniversary. My wife and I are, you know, I married 1991, January 6th. So this is a very special day. Beth, I love you. This is amazing. And then this is your birth, not the birthday, um, anniversary. But then I talk about my problem. <laughs> so, so the idea is my experience I'm going to talk about. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not saying this is bad what good it's everything there's a positive side not so much positive side okay so I, I you know me I, I make everything uh, positive and a very um, like yeah positive and everything it's good you know uh, right my um, muki in Japanese and I hope you can write here your experience about buying gears and about guitar, especially guitar. I mean, we can include the amplifier too, but just more guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitars, and yeah. So I will tell you my experience, and then after you watch this, maybe you can tell us your experience and what was good what was not good all right so the beginning about 1997-98 when I started playing my guitar I mean first started anybody has to start with something cheap right so already I told the story somewhere and um, I got nylon string Yamaha cheap classical guitar but then I didn't know how to do things, but I always wanna, you know, improve something. So I, find, I bought uh, steel strings, string, st steel strings, and I put that st st steel strings on a nylon string guitar. And you know, I didn't know the tune. I didn't have a tuning folk. I was guessing. There's no books. There's no internet. So I was doing it. One night, bridge came off. And except me, everybody thought something exploded. That was it. And my grandfather tried to, you know, fix that, but didn't, couldn't fix it, you know. Yeah. And that was hanging in my uh, room in Kyoto, Japan. And finally, without um, knowing, my fa my mother, you know, throw it, throw that to the trash. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the story. And after that, I bought a cheap guitar, very cheap, uh, no-name electric guitar. I don't know what happened to that guitar, but I think I did something like, you know, changing parts or something like that. Basically, I could not play, so I would play around and it just basically destroyed. And then finally, when I was 13, I want to learn guitar, and everybody thought, okay, you should get the acoustic guitar. So yeah, I got Yamaha or Greco, I forgot, you know, decent price. I went to music store, I bought it. And um, yeah, that was decent. Then learn a few things. And then my other story about 1978 Mustang. Um, my grandmother bought that guitar. And I, right after that, my mother said, please don't ask grandmother more anymore about that and just buy if you need and that's how I start uh, working um, you know news delivery uh, paper you know route delivery things uh, since age 13 to 17 four years that's how I bought all my guitar so anyway so the beginning is like that and then I start working and finally, I bought a 1980, 8082 Gibson ES335 with a single coil, you know, switch. But I didn't like that much. And I always break strings, you know, I pick a little too hard. 
And then, a year later, I found the 1967 Gibson ES335 red one. And that guitar, when I played it, without the experience, I can tell, compare 1980-67. Oh my god, so different. It just, everything so sweet. And that was the beginning of a pro this problem, I think. Because I, 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 I understood the difference between new guitar and old guitar, vintage guitar. And I, you know, basically brought the 1980 guitar to music store. They took that and then I paid more. But don't worry about the detail. But basically, I bought a new guitar, sold a half price, and then I paid more, more than regular guitar price because of vintage, you know, back then expensive. So, but that guitar really made me play well because real guitar, so really I have to play, I have to practice, you know. So sometimes buying a gi better guitar, it makes you practice, definitely. So I, you know, I w went through. So right there, uh, up, up till November 1986 when I came to Boston. So up to there, I had Yamaha Acoustic, uh, 1978 Mustang, 1967 Gibson ES335. Then, right before I went to Berkeley, about a year, year before, I bought a Seymour Duncan Stratocaster. Ba basically, Japanese company borrowed Seymour Duncan name to produce Stratocaster and had an EMG because I was really influenced by Steve Rukather using EMG. Larry Carlton, you know, studio guys because I want to do studio thing so right there you know I will say four or five guitars I think that's healthy it's good you know four or five guitars so my goal eventually f probably impossible but four or five guitar that's amazing if I just have a four or five guitars play like amazing so now go to uh, November 1986 I brought uh, my Seymour Duncan strut one strut and that was good because one guitar and I had to do everything. And then we're back to Japan, brought, you know, uh, my Mustang and I, I brought um, ES335. And 1990, I won Boston Best of Guitarist Competition number three. That's when I got Marshall JCM 900, two full stack speakers. I sold each one to get to my um, <laughs> apartment rent. So I sold each one. But then I got Takamine Acoustic. Takamine Acoustic. And this is other thing fine, funny too. I got speaker from Selection. I just got speaker. But then, again, different story. Right after that, I bought a Champ 12. Then I throw the speaker in. Different sound. Right there. I learned about speaker. Anyway, so right there, I have Simo Duncan Strat, year 335, and Takamine Acoustic. Very healthy. Three guitars, because student. And then, after I graduated, and, you know, 1991, first Fender Stratocaster ever I bought. That was Steve Ravon Stratocaster. That was... Oh, sorry. That was I bought in 1993, actually, a little later, because after I married, you know, yeah. And right there, uh, then I need an acoustic guitar to the session, different one. Then I, I got the, um, this one, Harmony. So I got this guitar for, you know, doing sessions. Then, I, you know, pickups. I need it. So back then, there's no, not so much choices like that. So, you know, again, four or five guitars for a while and then I start touring in Japan and my name was nobody know nobody knew about my name in Japan so I decided to do uh, do something so I went to Rito music publisher and I talked about you know anything that I can do with the teaching thing Again, that's a mini story there, but they just 
surprise. They don't know who is Tomo Fujita. They just I just showed up, but I, I was introduced by famous guitar player uh, production team. So uh, Rito Music basically could not say no to Tomo Fujita. So they accept my visit. Then uh, um, that's a different story. But you know, and um, then that's how I bring my name into uh, you know Japan. And then after that, I start playing Japanese. Stratcasters, all different Japanese company, you know, and then that right there, I really thought Japanese Stratcaster always the best. Anything else, you know, parts is great. I thought everything great, and then I would say 1996, and around there, I started going to Japan every year, and my best friend named Gansan Higashimura-san, he has this music store. East Village Guitars in Japan. And he was collector of all color uh, strut gases. Then other story. He was very inspired me because uh, I knew him when he was working at the music store in Japan. You have to really appreciate Anybody who likes you, anybody who helped you, don't forget even one day. This guy always listen what I'm talking about. So I was probably 16 or 17. He was already probably 21 or 23 working at the music store. Every time I talked, you know, I played Larry Crow in room 335 and he hears me, then he talked to me. He you know, we talk a little bit, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and he always listened to what I said. He always smiled. That was it. But then I, you know, went to Berkeley, then came back. Then he heard through his friend. And his friend, Gansan's friends told Gansan, Tomo is uh, here. Then Gansan found my phone number, or my parents' my phone number. He called me. The day before I left to Boston, that's timing, you see. After that, we are faxing about information about the guitar or doing something. We are kind of a conversation, faxing, because only phone or write a letter. So faxing is e easier back then. Anyway, he always talk about vintage guitar, how great Stratocaster vintage Stratocaster. He has so many of them. Late night, he showed me, you know, after his wife was asleep, you know, he showed me all Stratocaster. And then I try not to get into it because I thought that's a little too much job to, you know, liking this and that. See, back then, I was just into just playing, playing, you know. And just basically ignore about uh, four years. <laughs> I listen, again, I re appreciate Gansan, I listen, but I just ignore the parts like vintage, mm, I don't know. And every year, I did clinic, guitar clinic, at the Gansan's East Village Guitars. And one year, after I finished the gig, and the Gansan said, I have a 1963 Diosonic and a few Diosonic. Maybe you, you know, you want to play. Also, at that, that time, I was asking what guitar is cheap than available, you know. So Stratocaster back then, $6,000, $10,000, $20,000, I don't know. But back then, something like that. Still, you know, close to $10,000, right? And, um, yeah, no, no way you can buy it like that, right? So, but then, back then, 2001, I found this, that, 1969, you know, uh, 63, Diosonic. You can find on my channel, I played that guitar before. And relatively cheap, and guess what? It's the same, same, same price as I made that day, as a, you know, um, guitar seminar so I said I buy it you know so and that's I, I bought it 
and brought back. And one night, I brought that to the gig, and I have a Stratcaster, Steve Rebon Strat, and that. And the one slow blues, I played that guitar. And I was like, wow, I never, ever, ever heard that type of deeper tone and nuance about uh, Woody nuance from Stratcaster. And that, that, that was vintage pickups, vintage neck, body, all metal parts, it's ringing together. That's when I start getting into it. So the great part is, to me, is to learn history about the vintage guitar with little inexpensive way, just because, you know, Telecaster, Stratcaster is expensive. But back then, Diosonic Music Master was relatively cheap. You know, even all original. Here's a problem. I brought the guitar back and I start studying about guitar. And I realize the knob is not original. Oh, then I found out tone, uh, um, uh, tone pot, you know, uh, volume, 500k. That's the wrong one. So I have to change. So when I finding out these through the internet, uh, on eBay, I found problem, 1993 Music Master. And I want to really get kind of similar because that, that time I knew this, this is called Brown Guard. See, Brown Guard 1993 only March of 1993 they made that not uh, 63 sorry about that yeah so those very rare so I found a rare guitar the first time because Gansa had that one then I bought a year later or same year bought that and I found out this guy it's a teacher master of Diosonic he collected Diosonic crazy you know, so that's again problem. This guy start teaching me about the difference, original spec, all that stuff. Then I start buying pickups because I want to replace the original. Then here and there, sometimes eBay, it's really cheap deal because they wrote wrong, wrong way so that nobody know what it is. But I know how to find these things, you know, creatively. So I bought a few things, very, very cheap price, you know. So again, the problem, I spent a little time figuring out this. I should have a practicing, but I learned so much. And after that, I was a little hooked. So, you know, setting CD, my own CD, and that time, you know, using PayPal. So people PayPal me buying CD. So PayPal money kind of save up a little bit. Kind of extra, right? And then sometimes I see other Diosonic or Music Master. So, the other, so after that, I found 1956 Music Master. And I bought it. And I was like, wow. Wow. You know, where is it? Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, anyway. Oh, that, that's it. That's it. That one, yeah. I forgot. So that, like, wow. And that has a board you know guitar neck is a board that's why cheap and uh, actually Stu Mac maybe Dan can fix that guitar too that guitar you know you can't really play fully because neck is kind of bold but these two become my main thing but then after that I start knowing about the history then the problem is I, I buy see using CD income changing to Vintage Diosonic Music Master like that and not not good, but just I did that so Then the interesting part is then I kept these guitars Then when my daughter went to college, I needed more money and I sold these guitar here and there So it's it's like, you know vintage things sometimes if you do well You enjoy for a while then sell these then you gain more money then your family happy ever <laughs> maybe yeah I'm, I'm not suggesting but 
Yeah. So you see, so far, what I gained was enjoy the tone. Enjoy the tone. And late night, if you're really tired, vintage guitar, if you plug in, you know, and tone is so good, you're really wide awake, really true. It's all, you know, better than energy drink, you know. So I save a lot of energy drinks. And then learn history from 1956 to 1964. That's when Rio Fender made these student model, which is Diosonic two pickups version and one pickup version, the Music Master. And then other things I learned. When you see this, two pickups versus one pickup, you choose this because you have two pickups, right? And I believe, like, you know, eventually I thought, okay, I'm going to sell all Music Master. I kept, you know, Diosonic. Guess what? Music Master sounds better if you compare. Just because one pickup, no, no switch, no too much circuit, it sounds much more big and good. Yeah. Terry, he's an amazing, you know, Fender guy, history guy who, you know, made books and stuff. Terry likes Music Master, and I always wonder many years why he likes Music Master, you know, against uh, Duo Sonic. I understood that because simplicity. And I should have st you know, stop here, but then this is what happened. Once you learn one pickup sounds great, what's the origin of a one pickup? You know, Stratocaster has a three, Telecaster have a two, but Broadcaster. Before the Telecaster, one called Esquire, only have one. Obviously, the beginning, you just need one. But then you make more deluxe versions, too. Then the problem is this. What is this? Okay, this one, too. Great friend of mine named Steve Kimmer. First time I met him in Boston, and we played together, he invited me through a great friend of mine, Howard. Howard is a great guy. I love him. I want to hug him. So he called me, yeah, come on down. You can play with Steve. And we did this, you know, we play. And um, after the show, Steve said, stay, stay. Let's open the wine. That's like midnight. Then he starts showing lap steel. You know, then he go like, you know, he does major third, minor third, you know, those interval. So he start talking about intervals around midnight with red wine and this. And more I listen to it, I can't explain that story because that's very deep. I have to go too much. So, <laughs> so the story is Steve Kimok, one night I played with him. A week later, I bought a, steel, uh, a lap steel. And after that, I got into just like that, studying a lap steel. And I got so many different lap steels. Yeah, you know, studying. But see, but even this, watch. This, I'm sure I lost a lot of people already here. One pickup, sounds killer, great, very simple. And guess what? Sustain. Close up. Still ringing. Still ringing. Still ringing. Still ringing. When you feel this, you like. You enjoy music more, you know. So you see this tweed. And usually, usually people do like, you know, tweed. But then once you have this, the problem, already you taste different one, different, different age, you know. A different tuning. Okay, different tuning. Diff looks same. A different one. This ring is crazy. I mean, my head. 
Oh my god. On the wall. And I hit the you know vintage guitar like that. Yeah. You see? Right. So this is like you know come I'm showing a little bit problem. You know, you have to be careful. You, you buy one, just like me. I buy 963 that and you should stop there. Don't buy one more because one more then you, you learn similarity and difference. Now, once you know the difference, you want to know more. It's, a, it's applied to everything, but just, you know, be careful. But then, if you buy like this, you know, and then problem, because you find, oh my God, different, different, different pickups like that, you know, so. This is beautiful. Yeah, only only positive part is vintage guitar. As long as you know what you are doing, and you know what you are doing, and you buy, you know, a correct correct price. Pretty much, pretty much, you never lose any money. Pretty much, you you get the same amount you paid, or a little bit more. So anyway, do you see the story? Four or five guitars, step into the vintage guitar, bought another one, similar one, here, then understand maple neck, slab board, round board, 1956 to 64, comparing, then when you buy two same year, then two, two same year, it's different. That's when you go, wow, what's going on? Again, if you like that, go for it, it's fun. But more you do, only um, not the great part is takes, takes time to receive or go to music store like that. So you lose your playing time, you know. That's why I don't do this too much because I don't want to spend my, my valuable time. I want to play, you know. So, But just because this result is... this do you understand this is called ibanez az es so ibanez contact me years ago and they were they were very curious that i why i like this small guitar you know sort of student model and then actually we talked many years about how I like this guitar, maybe we can produce this guitar to market. But, you know, a lot of problems sometimes, you know, because that's kind of tiny. And then a lot of American people has more bigger hands. So like, you know, Diosonic is not great for everybody. You know, a little bit too small. Then 24, you know, um, scale like a Mustang, it's not fun, it's kind of same thing. So that's why I went to 25. And shape, uh, neck grip, and everything, you know, even roundness. Um, anyway, so, and then, funny part is, three, four years, I was really into buying a cheap electric guitar. Any model that cheap, like a Squire, beat up. I still have a few Squire, really beat up. And I want to know what's wrong with this guitar. If you receive, buy, then never ever touch any maintenance, what's gonna happen to this guitar? Then I studied. That's why, proudly, when we uh, start uh, you know, designing this guitar, first thing my request is bridge has to be really good, really good. So I did not accept any design that already made so this is new design design team really worked on a couple of years really worked on so this one i can put an you know custom shop model still sounds great you know but again this is inexpensive model so definitely 
body, you know, lacquer, I mean, like, you know, uh, painting or, or also material, it's not, the, you know, top end. But last a long time, this one, I would say three, five years. Once you buy this guitar, three, five years, you don't need anything. Then you can do humbucking, you know, so no, you can play heavy, heavy music without any um, noises. And uh, simple style tuner so that anybody can change you know guitar strings very easily because simple is good so bottom line if you are still here bottom line i work hard and i learn a lot appreciate the difference and i enjoy through vintage guitar to meet people everything was great but once again it just moderation on the moderation it just Balance is important because if you do, if you do too much, even today we have amazing um, you know anniversary, 32 anniversary. But if we if we keep buying stuff, you know this anniversary, you know uh, become miserable, you know. So uh, I'm just kidding, but yeah. So I have to be careful, you know. You have to be careful, you know. Moderation, you know. Yeah. So bottom line, what do you think? Do you proud about that? Honestly, having too many guitar, I feel a little ashamed because some people don't have a lot of guitars and, you know, you have to share things. That's why I share my knowledge freely on the internet. You know, that's my um, repay. <laughs> Not shame, it's just a shame. But yeah. So anyway, so any experience that you have, any suggestion that you have, any any thought about this, uh, it's a good topic, so please write below here. Thank you so much. What else? Yeah, and then people think you know, I'm a Fender guy. Definitely I'm a Fender guy just because I, I had to study. I want to study the Fender. So I really did 56 to 64, Dio Sonic Music Master. I know so much about those. But then... Of course, you know, SG, Flying B, Les Paul, other type of, you know, Gibson guitar. I don't show, but yeah, more more fun to do it. And uh, Gibson's cool, you know, Gibson's really amazing too. Amazing technology that they made with Humbucker, you know. Yeah, and, and the funk, Gibson style is really great. In past, you know, three, four years, Slowly, I'm shifting a little bit more acoustic just because foundation acoustic, you know, it's important too. So that's why recently, last year, I bought this one. This one is great purchase because a lot of history 1963 Gibson LG1. And I wanna, I wanted to actually buy, you know, J45 or J50, a little bit more money, but also, Gibson, all the Gibson is like some something it's really great, but something not so good. So you have to be very careful. It's not consistent, you know. I don't know why it's so consistent, but just look good, but they're not, you know, great. So this one, uh, I bought from Rumble Seat Music, so they know what they're dealing with. Also, I can really ask a lot of questions. And pictures so yeah so is this problem or not is this proud thing or shame well I don't know gas gear activation syndrome guitar collection <laughs> thank you so much for watching Tomosha the music I hope you enjoyed this episode and um, write any questions any suggestions and your comment below if you like this video please subscribe to the music and please share with your friends. This is very important. I want to really share how fun it is to play music and play guitar. Guitar really help us to become a better person. Be patient. And don't worry. Don't compare. Don't expect too fast. Be kind to yourself. That's really important. Okay? And every day, start with thankful. Thank you. Goodbye.